What we need is designer finance. In the 80s, we were only just beginning to learn about hype, as shown by the curious pop career of Zig Zig Sputnik. This could be number one next week. Here's Zig Zig Sputnik. <laughs> It was brilliant. They united the nation. You know, we had the miners' strike. The country was di divided into two. But Zig Zig Sputnik brought us all back together again. The band style was high-heeled, uh, pink patent, ankle boots, tight trousers, tons and tons and tons of pink hair. They looked absolutely brilliant. They looked like the tweenies after a night of heavy drinking. Zig Zig Sputnik were brilliant. Now talk about hairdos. I love the. The barnet, it was, that was good. And the fish, oh, the fishnet thing as well. Yeah. But he was a really hideous man, Martin Degville. He looked like a boiled egg in, with tights over his face. Personally, I mean, I want, you know, I want mega, mega stardom. I'm a 21st century I found myself completely straight looking and normal. I make the Mona Lisa look like a number thing. <laughs> See you, honey. <laughs> go, 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 let's go, let's go. The spiky guru behind the Sputnik was bass player and former punk Tony James. Zig Zig Sputnik is about rockets, sex, televisions, home computers, BMX bikes, hiring video nasties. It's about films like Blade Runner, Clockwork Orange. Tony saw things in stereo, you know. He didn't really care about the record. His agenda was capitalism is great, Japan is great, and uh, let's you know, reinvent a few Giorgio Moroder records and have hits. You just draw the drums yeah, when you want, right? Seek Seek were playing in the same studio, but at a different times, so the gear was there, and there was a bass there sitting there. And, like, you know, if you can't play bass very well, it's something that I've, I've seen, I've seen, like, the, you've got the, the notes written on the on different places on the fretboard. He had the songs written, like, this is that song, <laughs> and that's that song. They were one of the first bands to sample um, bits from films, bits from television shows, you know, and put them into the records. Um, and you hear that done all the time now, but nobody did it then. ZZ so Sputnik did have this bizarre crew of people. They would have their Ultra Vixens and Magenta Divine did their press. Yeah, I remember her. She had this ghostly face and her black Ray-Bans that never came off, didn't she? And, um, oh, she really fancied herself. Because I was a publicist at that time, I ended up doing their press. And like everything else with the band, I mean, it was all very, very carefully worked out. It was a very carefully orchestrated press campaign. Zig Zig Sputnik have come up with yet another publicity stunt that could affect the pop records that people buy. They're going to have adverts in the gaps between their songs on their next album. And the great thing about it was they couldn't get enough adverts, so they had a bloke from ID magazine going, ID magazine, read it every month. ID magazine. Cliche crush up of the 21st century. And they had the L'Oreal advert. They had studio line from L'Oreal, which was fantastic. <laughs> from L'Oreal, fixing gel, stronghold. Oh, studio. And what they hadn't banked on was that the first time you hear it, it's quite novel. But after 45 times of hearing studio line from L'Oreal, you just wanted to skim the disc across the room. Six Sputnik, they're wild, weird and off the wall. In the sun they talk about how they're scheming their way to number one and why they couldn't care less how they get there. After the first hit, they decided to go on the road and prove themselves to the world. There were a lot of doubters, a lot of people said that they were totally manufactured and that they couldn't perform on stage. The tour was dogged by rumours of poor ticket sales and then halfway through a spate of violence broke out. 
Ray Mayhew was remanded on unconditional bail. He faces three charges of unlawful and malicious wounding following an alleged incident during a concert at Reading University. Then Martin Degrel taunted the crowd at another gig. And it became a kind of an all too real version of the ultra violence philosophy that they were espousing in their songs and in their videos. The best thing they did, even when they were right down the bottom of the well and people had greased the sides of the well so they couldn't get out, and they made a record with Stock Aitken and Waterman just to make sure, just to make sure that somebody put a big plank over the well and nailed it down and left them in there. publicity machine was flat out but the reality was the records weren't selling anymore you know and the, it was fantastic when the circus came to town but by the time people had seen the third you know menagerie it was like oh it's just another circus well, I love TV and I love they are back together now and doing gigs releasing records but they're refusing to do any terrestrial media their view is that pop groups should have mystique about themselves and that even 15 years on, people still really want to know what Zig Zig Sputnik are about. And so now, uh, Zig Zig Sputnik are in cyberspace, which is actually exactly where they should be.